Do you know what the top four things to look at when it comes to web accessibility are? Uh, no, I can only think of two. Like, I only think of audio and then visual. So there's visual, hearing, mobility, and cognition. Uh, OK. So what are the last two? So mobility is where like um, someone may not be able to use a mouse, or they may need to use a keyboard to navigate around all of your UI. OK, yep. And cognition is where um, if you show somebody like flashing text or a site with like lots of animation, um, that might cause an epileptic fit or, or just cause them issues. Yeah, I think I remember someone tweeting saying like they had a condition where if there was like loads of parallax scrolling or something goes on, it makes them feel really nauseous because there's tons of like weird movements going on. When doesn't parallax scrolling make everyone feel nauseous is the real question. That's true. <laughs> so thankfully, there's a few tools to help with web accessibility issue diagnosis. We should go through them. Um, the first is uh, the Chrome Accessibility Developer Tools, which is like a, a Chrome extension you can grab. Um, I'm a bit of a douche, so I'm going to run it against your site. Mine so, isn't too bad. It's not great, I though. guess we'll find out. Yes. Um, so we're going to hop into DevTools in the Audits panel, um, check accessibility, and go and run it against this site. You've got a few, you've got a few passing tests, and you've got a few tests that are not passing, so we're going to look at those. Yeah. Um, the first one is yellow and says the text elements should have a reasonable contrast ratio. Matthew? Yeah, I set the opacity low on some of the menu items that aren't selected, so I need to bump them up or find a different way of visualizing it. One of the nice things about this is if you hover over any of the DOM nodes, it'll actually like, visualize it um, over in the preview pane, which is kind of cool. Yeah, so one of the other things I found, um, because I have another issue on my site, which is the About menu item doesn't actually explain anything about what's going to happen. But if you go into the accessibility options, um, like in the Elements panel, and you've got the styles and computer styles, there's an accessibility drop down that you get. And the nice thing with this is it actually shows you what the screen reader would say based on what it's, what it's got. Um, and the main reason I like this is, A, it's a nice light representation. It's something that's easy for me to go, oh, OK, that's what a screen reader would like, say. But it also shows you area labels that you could put that would affect the screen reader and what it says, um, which I kind of like because I wouldn't have known what the right area labels would have been. Um, so it's just kind of a nice way of educating yourself as you're going along, figuring out what you can change to get better screen reader support or anything like that. Cool. It's nice. Um, so uh, the thing that powers the Accessibility Developer Tools extension is actually called Accessibility Developer Tools. It's like this node module. Um, it's not necessarily just a node module, but basically it gives you all the functionality that you might need to um, go and run these tests locally uh, or hook up to continuous integration in case you wanted to write accessibility tests alongside your unit tests. Is that running it through something like PhantomJS? Or? So I wrote um, a while back a module called Ali. A11Y, which uses the gives you basically a CLI and CI module for doing that. You can just go and run it against Travis and nice. kind of do its thing. Drop it in your CI. Drop it in. Um, have you heard of Tenon? Yes, I have. You have. You have. So Tenon gives you this nice like web UI for just doing nice basic web accessibility testing. I've run it against developers.google.com, and we have a ton of missing alt attributes. Which yeah, probably like so. So Tenon is super nice. Like the only criticism that I have it, like it's great because you don't have to do any tooling. It's super easy to get like a gut check of where you are. But the flip side is when I run my site through, it says there's no problems with it, which we both know is now a lie. Um, so it's useful for a gut check, and it's super low effort to get it running on your site. But I question it, I guess. So Tenon, Tenon runs against the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines 2.0. And I think the Accessibility Developer Tools just has like a good set of general accessibility best practices it tries to check against. So they're, they're checking for related, but not, not, not necessarily the exact same set of things. Yeah. They're both worth checking out. So the other one is Totali. Totali. Two yeah. tips? No. T-O-T-A-1-1-Y. Um, Basically, it's got a super awesome logo, but what it is, is it's basically a bookmarklet. So you can drag it to your, your toolbar, and when you're on your site, click on it, and it adds like a little button onto the bottom of your web page. And the main reason it's nice is just the fact that it breaks up all the different criteria of what you could look for in terms of accessibility into nice little chunks that you just focus on that one area. Um, and then it starts adding things into the page. So with the contrast links, it'll actually like hover over the buttons, like add a little button saying, this is a problem area. Um, 
and it's just nice. It's very lightweight, super simple, and I think the way that it breaks stuff up is if you've got a ton of stuff wrong with your site, it's at least manageable chunks. Um, so I think it's just nice. It's a nice little tool. Cool. Um, I've got to give a mention to Ali.js by Rodney Rain, which is like this little helper library that helps you with some of the workflows you normally have when you're trying to make your app a little bit more accessible. So it makes things like trying to um, figure out what elements are considered focusable on the page a little bit easier, um, trapping focus navigation um, to a particular DOM subtree. Something that would have helped me actually, so I was trying to make um, this navigation drawer uh, keyboard accessible the other day, and I wanted to avoid you um, like tabbing through the navigation and then like going back yep, getting and to it like, tabbing to other parts of the page. Yep. So that might have helped with that, and it's just really useful for like querying the DOM for focusable or tabbable elements. Um, check it out, it's pretty decent. So I have some web accessibility pro tips. Go on. They're not really pro tips, I'm incompetent, but they're good. <laughs> They're good things to watch. They're solid out for. advice. They're solid advice. Um, so the first thing to keep an eye on is making sure that the components and elements in your page can be accessed using a keyboard and navigated around using a keyboard. Yep. Um, next, make sure that your elements can be used with a screen reader. So, for example, if I go to your website and I turn on Welcome to Voiceover. Voiceover. Voiceover speaks descriptions of items on the screen. It's basically what it does. Voiceover on Chromium. Unit testing a service worker. Gaunt face vertical line map gaunt. So, Window. voice it over off. Does all of that. The vertical line one is the interesting one where I've somehow added my name to the single vertical line. So, there's some issues there. We've already discovered in this episode that you have multiple issues with your site, probably worth checking out. Um, <laughs> people should also make sure that their, their apps work without sound. Yep. So, things like games might be worth keeping that in mind. Something like air horn, where all it is is a button that makes a horn. You could probably make that accessible, like show a. a I just got this idea now of just like a text that just goes who <laughs> on. Um, people should make sure their apps work without color because some people are colorblind or don't see the full spectrum of colors. Yeah. And people should make sure that their web apps work in high contrast mode as well. Which is the problem that I've got on my site. You have multiple problems, Matt. These, these are just some of the ones that we can actually address using tools. Thanks, man. I, I try. I try.